what do some of these so-called protesters really want? The complete and total elimination of law enforcement? I give you Compton, California. Hunt is on right now for the shooter that the L.A. County Sheriff's Department says ambushed two of its deputies. All of this happening just down the street from us. This is East Palmer. The shooting happened down that way. It is only just a few blocks from the Compton Sheriff's Station. And um, right now, let's go ahead and show you a piece of video that is at the center of this investigation tonight. These images were captured from the MTA station in Compton just after 7 tonight. You can see a man wearing dark clothing and what appears to be a ball cap walk up to the passenger side of a parked black and white unit from the sheriff's station. Investigators say that the man opened fire multiple times, striking the two deputies. Then the passenger door opens and the shooter can be seen running away. Now, we don't know the motive of this shooter. We don't know whether or not he was inspired by this bogus narrative that the police are mowing down black people just because they're black. But I do know this. This bystander who filmed it could barely contain his glee. He acted as if this was a baseball game. He was the play-by-play -play announcer, and the home team just hit a home run. This is sickening. Police just got aired out, n****. They just got bust on, n****. They just got aired out. They just got aired out, n****. It's going up. Somebody bust on their, Yeah. Who shared down, Somebody bust on the police, Damn. Oh. Oh, two sheriffs shot in the face. They just got aired out. Somebody ran up on the car and bust on their right through the window in the face. Now, the chief of police of Rochester, New York, has just been fired in the wake of a black man in police custody who died. The black chief of Rochester was fired by the black mayor. So this is not about making sure that there is representation of people of color when you have the black mayor and the black police chief in positions of responsibility. Increasingly, it's clear that what this is really all about is you, white person, should give your property to black people, also known as reparations. That's exactly what these people from Rochester were chanting. They made it perfectly clear what their objective really is. Give us your blank, or we're going to shut blank down. It can't be the desire for more racial diversity and representation. Hell, I'm in Los Angeles. L.A. is 40% Hispanic, as is the LAPD. 30% white, as is the LAPD. The rest, black and Asian, as is the LAPD. In fact, from 1992 to 2002, there were back-to-back -back black police chiefs during, including the O.J. Simpson case. And the then chief, Willie Williams, because of all the allegations that people were framing an innocent man, he did a full examination to make sure that nobody did anything wrong, put out a full report again, this is during the trial, and said nobody fabricated evidence, nobody planted evidence. He put out a report, and the very same people who were yelling and screaming that the LAPD had framed an innocent man were still claiming the LAPD had framed an innocent man. It did not matter. There's a word for what they really want, and that word is reparations. Former President Barack Obama gave an interview when he was still president, and he was asked about reparations. And here is what he said. The bottom line is that it's hard to find a model in which you can practically administer and sustain political support for these kinds of efforts. And what makes America complicated as well is the degree to which this is not just a black-white society, and it is becoming less so every year. So how do Latinos feel if there's a big investment in just the African-American community? And they're looking around and saying, we're poor as well. What kind of help are we getting? Or Asian-Americans who say, look, I'm a first-generation immigrant, and clearly I didn't have anything to do with what was taking place. And now you start getting into trying to calibrate, end of quote. 
The point Obama was making is that he felt it would be too divisive. How are you going to figure this out? He also said this. Theoretically, you can make obviously a powerful argument that centuries of slavery, Jim Crow, discrimination are the primary cause for all of those gaps. That those were wrongs done to the black community as a whole and black families specifically. And that in order to close that gap, a society has a moral obligation. But as a practical matter, it is hard to think of any society in human history in which a majority population has said that as a consequence of historic wrongs, we are now going to take a big chunk of the nation's resources over a long period of time to make that right end of quote. And do you know who else opposed the concept of race-based preferences in order to close gaps caused by historical discrimination? Who opposed affirmative action? John F. Kennedy. Here's what he said in 1963. I don't think we can undo the past. In fact, the past is going to be with us for a good many years in uneducated men and women who lost their chance for a decent education. We have to do the best we can now. That is what we are trying to do. I don't think quotas are a good idea. I think it is a mistake to begin to assign quotas on the basis of religion or race or color or nationality. On the other hand, I do think we ought to make an effort to give a fair chance to everyone who is qualified, not through a quota, but just look over our employment roles, look over our areas where we are hiring people, and at least make sure we are giving everyone a fair chance, but not hard and fast quotas. We are too mixed, this society of ours, to begin to divide ourselves on the basis of race or color, end of quote. So JFK said exactly the same thing as did Barack Obama. You know who else felt that programs, special programs, in order to close the gap might be dangerous? FDR, New Deal aside, here is what he said. The lessons of history confirmed by the evidence immediately before me show conclusively that continued dependence upon relief induces a spiritual and moral disintegration to the national fiber. To dole out relief is to administer a narcotic, a subtle destroyer of the human spirit, end of quote. And when you make the argument that slavery was so long ago, how are you going to figure it out? The fallback position becomes, of course, Jim Crow, discrimination, historical abuse of blacks, as was made by Roland Martin. What do you say to the folks who says it just wasn't when slavery ended, though, the Jim Crow laws? There and, you and, go. And, 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 and all the things that came after that that stop black people from being able to enter into the U.S. economy like everyone else? Uh, I think a lot of the uh, what uh, we did to address that involved things like uh, the Great Society, many of these public assistance programs. Most You're of those wrong. were launched right about the same time as the 64 Civil Rights Act, and many of those things were done in a sense of trying to get people sort of uh, in a better state You're economically. Wrong. And you don't think a form of reparations have already been paid and are continuing to be paid? What do you call the war on poverty? Martin Luther King Jr.'s Poor People's Campaign, January 2015. Beyond a massive expansion of welfare programs, the cornerstone of Johnson's war was its community action programs, which sought to give blacks real equal opportunity. Johnson cleverly bypassed Southern states' obstruction to racial equality by circumventing local welfare authorities. So a big intent behind Johnson's war on poverty was to do that, a form of reparations to close the gaps. How has that worked out? John Goodman, president of the National Center for Policy Analysis, said in 2014, we have spent 15 trillion fighting poverty since 65. We are currently spending $1 trillion a year, an amount equal to about $22,000 per poor person or $88,000 for a family of four. Yet our poverty rate today, nearly 16%, is higher than it was in 1965, 14%. If there was a war on poverty, poverty won. These programs are destroying the culture of the recipient communities. They are replacing a culture of self-reliance and self-help with a culture of dependency. To put it bluntly, we are paying young women to have children out of wedlock. We are paying them to be unemployed, and we are paying them to remain poor. What is more, the welfare state appeals especially to those in near poverty, promising a wide range of non-cash benefits in exchange for only one thing, a low income." End of quote. And regarding the apparatus for reparations, this does not even include the myriad number of 
diversity consultants in colleges and universities uh, and in corporations, and as Peter Kersenow, writing for the National Review, points out, all of the rules and regulations and laws that are in place to fight systemic discrimination. This consists of, among other things, the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice, the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Education, the EEOC, the Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs, FBI, states' rights commissions, local human rights commissions, state attorneys general, tens of thousands of investigators, enforcement and compliance officers, local prosecutors, and private attorneys who enforce a sprawling framework of civil rights laws and equal opportunity laws." End of quote. What are some of these laws? They include, but are not limited to, Title VII of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, Section 1981, 1982, and 1983 of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and 1871, the 14th Amendment, the 15th Amendment, the Fair Housing Act, the Voting Rights Act, and thousands of state and local equal opportunity and anti-discrimination laws. And this doesn't include the tens of thousands of human resource officers and diversity inclusion personnel who guard against systemic structural racism within their respective institutions, end of quote. So to repeat, what do these protesters really want? Reparations? Reparations is the extraction of money from people who were never slave owners to be given to people who were never slaves. I know what they don't want. They don't want a restoration to Judeo-Christian values in our country. How do we know that? Well, listen to this chant from some of the protesters in Charlotte. Wow. F your Jesus. Let's end on a somewhat lighter note, shall we? Have you ever interviewed Nancy Pelosi? Well, this gentleman recently did, but something tells me he won't be interviewing her a second time real soon. I mean, what deal can we have, uh, Crazy Nancy? I'm sorry, I, th that was the president. I, I have such reverence for the office, I would never use that term. But it is but you hard, just did. isn't it? Oh, come <laughs> but on. you just did. You know what I mean. You want to get away? I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I'll see you next time.